tonight on a special two hour 2020. Michael Jackson, Afterlife. The fateful rehearsal just hours before his death. Michael Jackson is wearing three layers of shirts. He was shivering cold in the middle of summer. And unable to sleep. Either Murray isn't telling the truth, or someone other than Murray gave Michael Jackson a fatal dose of propofol. Now, almost bigger in death than he was in life. All new interviews with his inner circle about his earliest days. I'm not lit properly. This isn't fair. And his last, literally. I had to help pick him up and place him in the coffin. Showing never seen pictures, finally setting the record straight. And taking us back to the glory days that began it all with Thriller. He spent the next 25 years of his life, you know, in pursuit of something to match that. Plus, today's hottest superstars, Usher and Justin Bieber, on what he taught them. I listened to all those songs, Beat It, Billie Jean. Tributes and memorials from his final resting place to the place it all began, Gary, Indiana. I'm sure my son will be very pleased. Tonight, how the king of pop lived and lives on. Michael Jackson, Afterlife. Here now, Elizabeth Vargas and Chris Cuomo. Good evening. It was one year ago today that Michael Jackson died. While the king of pop has been laid to rest, so many questions about his life and death have not until tonight. Over the next two hours, you will hear surprising and very personal details from the people closest to Jackson. And we'll begin at the end of a minute-by-minute account of Jackson's last critical hours described by the people who were there. It was the eve of what Jackson said would be his final concert tour, a sold-out event that would never get off the ground. It was billed as the greatest comeback concert of all time complete with fainting fans, dazzling dance moves, and the songs that were the soundtrack for a generation. This is it. Ten shows starts July 8th. It would be his first concert in a dozen years. So when Michael Jackson himself arrived in London to announce his comeback on March 5th, no one dreamed that in less than four months, the king of pop would never sing again. I need an ambulance as soon as possible, sir. We have a, a, a gentleman here that needs help, and he's not breathing. Jackson's sudden, unexpected death on the eve of his concert debut raised suspicions and questions unanswered to this day. I do believe it was foul play. I do believe that. When they say If you're looking for clues as to what killed Michael Jackson, you might start here in the behind the scenes rehearsal for the movie This Is It, just released on DVD. At first glance, the 50 year old Jackson appears confident and in control. I, I gotta cue that. I gotta cue that. That should trigger on his own. Oftentimes he'd say, Stop, watch me or listen to me, and he'd sing the note that he doesn't hear. It's not there. Okay, it should be. It should be. And he'd do the step that he didn't see. He was not going to settle. He wouldn't allow any of us to settle. I think that he was happier than he had been in years. But longtime Jackson associate Brian Oxman says the movie, called from over 100 hours of rehearsal footage, is heavily edited to make Jackson look stronger than he was. The reports from the people who surrounded Michael is that he was extremely stressed. He was extremely upset about how the show was going. Take a close look at that movie. Michael Jackson is wearing three layers of shirts. The other dancers are all in their bare undershirts. He had chronic bronchitis and he was anemic. He was shivering cold at the rehearsals in the middle of summer. The closest people to him were very alarmed at what was happening to Michael. Concert promoter Randy Phillips admits he was worried that Jackson was literally wasting away. I was concerned about his weight and that he wasn't eating. And I actually brought in someone whose sole job it was to make sure he ate. 
And former manager Frank DeLeo knew Jackson was up at all hours of the night. He said he wasn't sleeping. And I, you know, and I said to him, well, what seems to be the problem? Well, I'm just excited, you know, I'm all wound up. We saw Michael Jackson deteriorating. We actually saw him more than a couple of times in Beverly Hills going into a doctor's office. And he would come out just out of it. We love you, Michael. Okay. TMZ founder Harvey Levin says that while Jackson was rehearsing for This Is It, he would go to the office of his longtime dermatologist, Dr. Arnold Klein, several times a week. And it wasn't just for face work. Jackson reportedly slept in Klein's office, often for hours at a time. He seemed, you know, just unfocused as he walked out, and it was a little different from walking in, for sure. Can you still moonwalk, Michael? Why would I be able to? You know, it was pretty clear something was wrong. But Dr. Klein says he saw nothing wrong. He didn't like a person who was suffering from anorexia. He very muscular and he very, very happy and dancing. He danced in the office. In the three months leading up to his concert, Dr. Klein gave Jackson nearly 50 intramuscular injections, often several times a week. The last time, just three days before his death. I've given him medication, yes, but you could take all the medication I gave him in a year right now and nothing would happen to you, okay? I wish I could have been there every minute of the day. But this doctor was there every night. Dr. Conrad Murray, the Las Vegas cardiologist, charged with giving Michael Jackson a full dose of the powerful anesthetic propofol to help him sleep. Jackson had insisted the concert promoters hire Murray to care for him during the tour, paying him nearly $150,000 a month, more than a million dollars a year. He looked me in the eye and he said, look, this is the machine pointing to his body. This is the machine that fuels this entire business. I need a doctor 24-7. He makes me feel good about myself. I want this doctor. At that point, I said, you got the doctor. On Easter Sunday, April 12th, before Dr. Murray is hired, registered nurse Sherilyn Lee says she gets a frantic call from Jackson. He said, find me an anesthesiologist. I don't care how much money they want. She says he was begging her for propofol so he could sleep. She says she refused, knowing the drug should never be used outside a hospital setting. I said, you don't want to do this. You might not wake up the next morning. He said, no, my doctor said it's safe. On Father's Day, June 21st, just four days before he died, Lee got another urgent call from Jackson's aide. And I could hear Michael in the background tell her, tell her that one side of my body is hot, is hot, and one side of my body is cold. It's very cold. And I, and I said, tell him he needs to go to the hospital. Somebody had given him something that hit that central nervous system because, you know, that's all he wanted was to sleep. The next day, on June 22nd, Dr. Murray told police he tried to wean Jackson from propofol, giving him just 25 milligrams, along with a sedative and anti-anxiety drug. It was enough to put Jackson to sleep. On June 23rd, Murray says he gave Jackson Ativan and Versed, no propofol at all. Again, Jackson fell asleep. The next day, another rehearsal. It would be Jackson's last. He was so full out and so into the show that night and the night before that. Those were our best two run-throughs of the show. He was leaving. We were had goosebumps. I mean, I saw exultation in the cast and crew. The show was done and that goal had been reached. And so he left so excited and ecstatic. The last time I saw him at 12.30 a.m. in the morning, Thursday morning, he put his arm around me and he said to me in that kind of soft, lilting voice of his, he said, thank you for getting me here. I've got it now. I know I can do this. I'll take it. If you had told me that night that he would be gone the next day, I would have said you're crazy. Hold for applause, slow fade out. Coming up, what actually happened the night Michael Jackson died? What eyewitnesses told police. He observed Michael Jackson on the bed, lying on his back, with his arms extended outward from the body. That's next.